Okay, let's continue with data analysis. Today we will walk through a software package, a package called Simca. So this Simca is designed for doing multivariate data analysis and then different other uh, data analytical challenges. So what I have here for you is an example data that has been collected to Excel. So, so this is visually easy way to show, show the data. But you can have also the raw data existing as, as different type of file formats. And, and uh, for example, in case of spectroscopic data, it is always, uh, it is quite often uh, stored as, as a single measurement files. And then these can all be imported to, to Simca. I will show you examples how to do it. But we first, first do the, the first case with this simple, simple data set that is con uh, consisting of some food related um, interview data. So we have a food, uh, food phone interview that is based on, on calling different households in these countries and then asking them the basic question that do you have a ground coffee in, in your household? Do you have tea in, in your household or, or uh, so some other food items? So uh, the idea here is that we would like to do um, multivariate data analysis and clustering of this, this data set with, with SIMC. So we have first collected the data here and you can see that there's a numeric value. So this is a percentage of uh, households having, having this specific item in there in the kitchen on the at that time. And then there are also a few missing data points, but, but this is all fine. So you can still do the uh, multivariate data analysis. So this is how you start in, in the Simca software package. So, so this is the window where you should be in the, in the beginning and, and it has a quite logical Windows logic. So, so you start from the project and uh, then you have this project window asking you on, on to get started with this, this exercise. So we click here first to start with on opening a project and, uh, and or creating a new one. And we are creating a new one this time. And then we create a new regular project. And then what you can see here is, is, um, is some instructions on, on what is happening. So, so this is quite intuitive program. So, so this is the program is helping you to understand what is happen, happening here. And we start here by clicking create. And, and then the program asks you, where do you have the data set? And then you should have saved the, the original data somewhere. So in this case, I have a foods update Excel file that contains this, this data set. And then what we can see here is now um, the import window in Simca for, for this Excel based data. And we can again see it in a, structured in the same way. So the names of the countries are here and names of the food items here in this direction. And then on the upper row, you can see possibility to name a certain column or row to primary variable IDs or primary observation IDs. And uh, this is um, quite important phase so that you have a good describer for, for your data. And in this case, I would like to have the um, use the country name as a primary observation ID. So then I select this column here and then name it to be the primary observation ID. And then I do the same for this row here. So then the names of the food items become primary variable ID. And then I can see that in this data set there are some other pieces of information that are useful. So uh, for example the geographic location of this country, is it the Central Europe, Southern Europe or, or Benelux country or, or maybe Northern Europe. And then these ones we can use as a class identifier. And the same for, for the latitude of the capital. So, so let's call it like class ID. And maybe you can use this geographic location as secondary ID. So, so this is how we have now structured the data. So all the observations are here. So, so all these food items and all the countries. And then we move on with the exercise. And then everything is structured here. So then we can start doing the importing process and then give this data uh, file, file a name. 
and then save the project. And then we have the data in 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 Simca. So what we can do next is then start doing the um, uh, doing the, the modeling part. So so we have the data set here. So here in, in this phase is to make a new project and a new model for, for this data. So then we click this new and then comes again an intuitive window with, with these instructions. So in this case we would like to do uh, overview with the principal component analysis, PCA. And at the same time you can always read the instructions here. So let's uh, move on. And then uh, the program is checking that you have the uh, right variables. So, so these are the food items and that you have the uh, right observations. These are the names of the countries. And uh, then we can do the overview and we can see that um, 16 observations, 20 X variables. And then we are doing unit variable scaling of, of these 20 variables. And we can also check the model options here in this window. And, and uh, that gives us a possibility to see what is uh, happening for, for different type of parameters, like how we are scaling our coefficients and, and uh, how we are handling the residuals. And uh, once these have been sorting out, so, so then you can finish the modeling phase. And what we can see here is a descriptive statistics of this model. So model is always handled in this model window. So we have our model one, PCA analysis of this, um, um, this data set with the three uh, principal components. And then we can see from this presentation how much each principal component is describing from the variation in, in the data set. So we can see that the first principal component is capturing 31.7% of variation. The second one a little bit more, so that we reach 51%. And then finally, the third one, um, so that we have 64.7% of variation uh, captured from, from the original um, data. And in the analysis phase, then you can use the scores presentation to see how these original variables are related to each other. So now you can look the scatter analysis and then see the first two principal components. First principal component here and the second principal component in this direction. And now we have the new coordinates for, for the original data set. So we have um, whatever 50% 50, 50 of variation here. And then we can see how these new coordinates describe the old data set. And we can see that the northern Europe countries are close to each other, and then whereas the southern Europe uh, countries are, are are different in this cluster analysis, and then the central Europe countries are mainly here. So, so this is the way to see the relative position of, of these observations in relationship to each other. And then you can use the loadings presentation to to see how these uh, why these variables are different. And then we can maybe take the column presentation and, and see the loadings of the first principal component. And now it's important that you always look these scores and loadings uh, next to each other. So if we have like, um, like them structures like this here, so then we can see that in this direction of first principal component, there seems to be big variation between countries like Sweden and Portugal. And then um, Portugal has a negative first principal component value. So then we can do the interpretation of the model from here and see that there's one parameter that is, uh, uh, that is have, having the high negative uh, loading value. So garlic and then same for the olive oil. So it seems that this variable is explaining the difference between these two countries. And in the same way, in the positive direction, we can see something like a, Tinned soups and, and, and the frozen fish and, and the frozen vegetables that are having quite high um, high value on on, um, on the direction of first principal component and that explains why why Sweden is, is here and, and then in relationship to for example Portugal and uh, this is the basic basic way of uh, doing the analysis uh, there's quite a lot of other other 
parameters that you can optimize and many other things. Uh, but that's something that we can discuss later on on the lecture. But this is how to get started. Very good. Good luck.